Welcome to the Counter Vortex, your weekly roundup of underreported news and views from around the world with an unapologetically radical dissident left perspective. Brought to you by your chief reporter, ranter, and blogger, Bill Weinberg. That would be me. Since the humanitarian pause ended, Israel has focused its airstrikes on Gaza's southern city of Khan Yunus, now swelled with hundreds of thousands displaced from the north of the Strip. Along with the strikes, Israeli planes are dropping leaflets on the city, warning the populace to flee further south to Rafah on the Egyptian border, despite having earlier declared the southern Strip as a safe zone, quote unquote. Most of the Strip's 2.3 million population has already fled to the south, and Egyptian officials believe that Israel is preparing to next drive them across the border into the Sinai Desert. The aim of the Khan Yunus strikes is to disrupt the mass of the population from the south and push it towards Egypt, one Cairo official told Qatar's. Al Arabi Al Jadid newspaper. President Abdel Fattah el Sisi has categorically rejected a forced resettlement, and the idea is generating anger among Egyptians. The Israeli Defense Forces expanded authorization for bombing non military targets, the loosening of constraints regarding expected civilian casualties, and the use of artificial intelligence to generate more potential targets than ever before, appear to have contributed to the destructive nature of the current war on the Gaza Strip, an investigation by progressive Israeli website 972 reveals. These factors, described by current and former Israeli intelligence officials, have likely played a role in producing what has been one of the deadliest military campaigns against Palestinians since the Nakba of 1948. For the first time, the annual UN Climate Summit, now meeting in the United Arab Emirates, is focusing on the overlap between conflict and the climate crisis. This convergence is especially clear in rebel-controlled northwest Syria, as is pointed out, by a feature story on the new humanitarian website. A years-long drought is compounding the suffering caused by over 12 years of war and devastating earthquakes that struck the region earlier this year. Water pumping infrastructure has been repeatedly hit by regime and Russian warplanes, leaving farmers without irrigation for parched fields. Since the start of October, the Northwest has been experiencing the most intense military escalation by the Assad regime and its Russian patron in nearly three years, with scores killed and over 120,000 displaced by airstrikes. The ruling junta in Niger has broken off a military partnership with the European Union that provided training and equipment for the counterinsurgency against jihadist rebels. The rupture is linked to the EU's refusal to engage with the junta that took power in a July coup d'etat. Russian officials have meanwhile visited the country, signing documents to strengthen military cooperation. Russian supports for other armies in the Sahel region has led to massive human rights abuses. Yet, the EU's own record was far from exemplary. The bloc spent large sums on Niger's military, but failed to implement measures to prevent abuses, resulting in civilian casualties that have played into the hands of the jihadists. In what is being hailed as an historic decision, An appeals court in Ecuador ordered the return of a 42,360-hectare expanse of the Amazon rainforest to the Siecopai indigenous people 
generations after they were driven from the territory by the military, a provincial court of Sucumbios ruled that the Siecopai retain indigenous title to their ancestral homeland, which lies along the border with Peru in remote country. The lands were seized by Ecuador's military during the war with Peru in 1941 and remained a military-controlled zone until being incorporated into Coyabeno Wildlife Reserve in 1979. Ecuador's Ministry of Environment has been given 45 days to deliver a property title to the Siecopai Nation and make public apologies for the usurpation of their homeland. The legislature of the oil-producing Canadian province of Alberta invoked the controversial Alberta Sovereignty Act in response to new federal environmental policies. The provincial legislature passed a resolution resolving to urge the government to use all legal means necessary to oppose the implementation and enforcement of the federal initiative in Alberta. The initiative referred to is Canada's proposed Clean Energy Regulations, which the resolution says would have an extreme chilling effect on investment in Alberta's energy sector. Premier Danielle Smith introduced the Sovereignty Act in November 2022, asserting that Albertans no longer wanted Ottawa to interfere in our constitutional areas of jurisdiction and proclaiming a right to provincial noncompliance. English language media accounts are calling Argentina's far-right president-elect Javier Millet a self-described anarcho-capitalist but this appears to be a translation error. In episode 203 of the Counter Vortex podcast, Bill Weinberg, that's me, sets the record straight, exposing anarcho-capitalism as an oxymoron and the fascistic Millet as antithetical to everything that Argentina's proud anarchist tradition ever stood for. You can listen at Patreon. And while you're there, please subscribe. And please also follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And please join us next week for the Counter Vortex.